Hello, my name is JP Coover, and today I'm gonna draw a world map. So I was looking through some maps on Pinterest and I stumbled upon this amazing illustration by Red Quills. The color, the complexity, but also the simplicity of the icons. It just inspired me to draw a fun world map. So I busted out my set of Papermate flare pins because I felt like the colors in this set kind of matched the map inspiration. Now I really like these pins because they're cheap and disposable, but they also have a good felt tip that doesn't split and fray right away. The other good thing is they're super easy to find at any sort of office supply store. Now usually I would make up my own world map to draw, but I thought that it might be fun to reference a more well-known map. You know, combine Red Quill's inspiration image with a location that people actually know about. In this case, the map of Hyrule from the Nintendo 64 classic Ocarina of Time. So I've got my inspiration, my reference, and my pens ready to go, but before I can jump into actually illustrating this map, I need to spend some time figuring out how I'm gonna draw each of the elements that will make up this entire illustration. Now because I'm using this inspiration it's actually pretty easy. Just like on Red Quill's map, the cities are red dots, roads are orange dash lines, rivers are solid blue lines, and fields are three little green hash marks. So I just love making these simple little trees. A dark green triangle is a perfect icon for a conifer tree, but don't forget the little line for the trunk. And a lighter green circle works as a deciduous tree. They're super easy to draw, just a filled in circle with a line for the trunk and you put a bunch of them together and you've got yourself a forest. Deserts are just little dots of yellow sand sprinkled about. <laughs> And now it's time to figure out the mountains. Because Red Quill's map doesn't have any mountains on it, I gotta figure out how I want them to look on my map. I wish I had a good dark orange or light brown for these mountains, but I don't think these Papermate pens come in those colors, so I'm just gonna use purple instead. Doesn't make sense, but hopefully it'll look cool. <laughs> so I wanna keep these mountains simple, but I also want them to have a little bit of interest. So I've landed on a simple upside down triangle shape with the bottom missing, but filling it in on one side to give the mountain a little bit of depth and shadow and then drawing some lines coming down from that shadow to give it some more depth and dimension. You know, I'm looking at these mountains and maybe it's better just to have a simple open triangle. I don't know. Now I'm getting impatient because it's time to actually start drawing this map. But before I can jump in with the paper mates, I gotta start by making a sketch with a pencil. I've drawn in the river and the roads to help space out and scale the map. I've added the town locations by drawing a little circle and then it's time to start labeling each of these areas. You know, I wanna make sure that all of the text can fit in this Space and not overlap the actual drawing of the map. Next up is the mountains. I think these are much easier to fill in around the road and river and all the text. And you can see that I'm not getting too detailed at this stage. In fact, I'm not even drawing any of the trees, just blocking off areas where I know they're gonna go. The point of drawing in pencil first is to make sure all the elements of the map fit together nicely. I don't want Death Mountain to be too close to Kakariko Village or end up with a huge Lake Hylia and a tiny Lost Woods. If something doesn't work, I can just erase the pencil and try again. Once I'm comfortable with the sketch and I feel good about the layout and I'm confident I can fill in any missing details with the pens, then it's time to move on to inking with my colorful paper mates. It is kind of a hassle, but these paper mate flare pens are slightly translucent, so I do need to erase my pencil marks before I ink over top of them. I'm using using a white vinyl eraser and very lightly erasing the pencils so they're they're just barely visible just enough so I can see what I'm drawing and how much space each element is taking up I'm starting the inking process with lettering all of the location names I find it much easier to shift my drawings around the lettering than it is to try and fit the words into the spaces that have already been filled up with drawings I'm being slow and careful with the lettering but 
but not uptight. I want the letters to be generally the same height and width, and I'm also drawing each word on a bit of an arc. Technically, it would be easier to letter everything in a straight line, but I think the arc makes the label fit into the terrain of the map better and not look like it's just been stamped on after the fact. The towns are all drawn in in red to match the little circle icon, and then the geographic locations are going to match whatever color their icons are drawn in. So Lake Hylia and Zora's domain will be blue because that's the color of the river and the lake. The Gerudo Valley is purple to match the mountains. The Haunted Wasteland is yellow for the desert. And the Hyrule Field is green because it's a giant green field. <laughs> Once everything is labeled, I'm moving on to the rivers and the roads. There's something really fun about connecting these places with pathways. It kind of makes the map feel alive. You know, like I can imagine Link and Epona cruising along one of these pathways from Hyrule Castle Town to Kakariko Village and then up into Goron City. You know, it's, it's starting to actually look like a map now. Next up is filling in these big empty spaces. So I'm starting with the purple mountains and right now I'm thinking I might keep these simple like this. I don't know, we'll see. I'm not sticking too closely to my original sketch. It's more important that the mountains fill up the space in relationship to the road and river but I think the good thing about getting these mountains in now is that it kind of frames the other areas of the map So I won't have to think about how much space the forests and the field and stuff are gonna take up Speaking of I'm now moving on to the trees the desert and the field areas This is really my favorite part just sort of mindlessly repeating these little symbols over and over to create a larger section of the map. I talk about it all the time on this channel, but you don't have to be an amazing illustrator to make a cool drawing. Maps are especially awesome because you can draw really simple shapes like these three little dash lines, repeat those shapes over and over again, and you've created an expansive and grand Hyrule field. A bunch of tiny triangles with a line out the bottom, all drawn next to each other, repeating over and over again, and you have yourself the mysterious lost woods. And before you know it, the map is basically drawn. It's time to decorate it a little bit and really put it over the top. Because this Ocarina of Time map is kind of a weird shape, I'm framing it with some nice bubbly clouds. Think of them as the old Nintendo 64 invisible walls. You know, Hyrule probably extends past these areas, but we aren't seeing those sections on this playthrough. With the black pin, I'm going around the outside and drawing a simple border, just a straight line with a few chunks taken out so it looks like a map, like an actual sheet of paper map that Link would find on his adventure. And of course, I've decided to go back in and add some details to these purple mountains. Once I filled in all the green trees, I wanted there to be a little more color so having a shaded section on each mountain peak just felt right. Does it make the map look better? I'm not sure. That's up to you. So what do you think of this Hyrule map? Hopefully this video has inspired you to give drawing maps a shot. If you enjoyed it and would like to support the channel and also get monthly tabletop role-playing game adventure zines, check out my Patreon that's linked down in the description. This month I'll be releasing a tabletop RPG about busting ghosts. Thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya! Yeah.